Okay, let's see. So what I try to do to make the definitions a little more bearable, um, because that's the hardest part of, you know, anything is learning the language of it. Because uh, we know math itself is a foreign language, so that's why math is difficult. Right? We've got to catch up with all this stuff that somebody made up centuries ago. That's the nice thing about statistics, it's relatively new. Parts of it are still being made. It's crazy. So it's, it's like math happening right now instead of in the 17th century. No, no, it's like right now. Um, so we kind of start off the first section, really. All, all the section 1-1s one and 2-1s and 3-1s, if you'll notice on the homework, it says nothing about those. They have no homework associated with them. They're sort of a background to the chapter coming up. So if you read through 1-1, one, one, it's sort of a background of what chapter 1 is going to be. 2-1 so is about what 2 is going to be. You kind of with me? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so one one goes over the background very quickly. One two is about critical thinking, and and really one two is something like this. Uh, let's let's start off with this. Let me try to combine one three and one two a little bit, right? Just to really really throw you guys off. Um, what's something you would like to know about the students at Grosspot, like? The percentage of them who smoke, or the average age, or something. What would you like to know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, so the percentage who prefer uh, Coke, Pepsi. All right. How are we with that? That's that's not bad. That's okay. We can deal with that. All right. Age old question. It goes way back. Um, so if I wanted to figure that out, I ha do, do I have time? Do you know how many students go here? Yeah, like 18, 19,000 students. Do you want me to assign that and say, go talk to all the students? No, no. So what would you do, of course, to get a handle on this? Take a sample. You'd talk to a smaller group. Now, what's weird right now is you guys have no idea what large enough is. When, when Gallup does polls. Gallup is another website that I like a lot. So I don't know if you guys ever heard of Gallup.com, but they do a lot of polling of things. They know, when they talk about the entire United States, they talk to about a thousand people. And a lot of people are like, uh, no, that's not enough. That's way plenty. That's plenty of people. If you randomly pick people, you don't even need that many. But they just do that to give themselves a large. The larger your sample size, the more sure you are about what you see. But you don't have to be that large to really be pretty certain about what you see. So for Grossmont, I'd say a sample of you know 40 would be plenty, believe it or not. Now here's the trouble. So let's say we want to figure this out. We don't want to talk to the population of people because it's too big. And the population is all the things or people that I want to say something about. You with me? So if I want to say something about the population of California, I'm going to pick a sample of people who are in California, right? Whereas if I want to say something about the United States and I only pick people from California, is that a good sample? No, it's not representative of my population. So the population is the group of people or things you want to say Something about. Okay, and after today, I'll probably have a few people drop just because of my writing. Like I can't deal with that. I understand. I had a teacher that could not read their own. We said, "What did you write up there?" He's like, "Somebody remember what I wrote up there?" <laughs> so I'm not there yet, but I am getting really close. Um, so I don't want to talk to the whole population normally because the population is normally large. Would a group of three people, could that ever be a population? Of course it could. Population could be one, right? But normally we consider a population to be very large, but it doesn't have to be. It could be any size. In this case, it's 20,000 people almost. So we want to talk to a sample. So in this case, our population, let me put specifically, in this case, it's all Grossmont students. 
Everybody who's enrolled somehow, in some way. So we don't have time to talk to all those people, right? We don't have access to all their emails, right? I can't hack into there. I haven't tried. I don't know. Maybe I can. So we talk to a sample. And a sample, of course, is what? How would I try to define a sample? So the specific example would be we could take 40 students. That would be our sample. But what's like the general definition of sample? A small group from the population. Good. A small subgroup from the population, right? Or it doesn't have to be small, but a smaller subgroup of the population. Now, sample by itself could include a bad sample. So if my sample was you, all of you, is that a good sample? Considering our population, what's our population? All the students at Grossmont. So if I pick you as a sample, why might that not be good? I'm not saying you're bad people, but why might that not be a good sample? Yes, sir. Because it's not random? Okay, it's not random. Be a little more specific about that. Why would you guys not necessarily be good? It's another word that starts with R that I'm really looking for here. You need variety. Why do you need variety? Because what do we want to do with our population? We want to find a sample that Represent. represents our population. Why would you guys not represent the population? You're all like, I'm a gross bond student. What the hell? <laughs> Don't take it personal. Why would you not represent the population well enough? You're all in one class. You're all taking statistics. So you're automatically possibly skewed a little bit in your preference for Coke or Pepsi. Who knows, maybe people that need to do majors that require statistics, maybe they're naturally drawn to one of those two. Who knows? You kind of with me? So if there's anything that connects the group together, then that could be a bias in my results that automatically have something in common, which might affect what I'm looking at. You guys with me? So you're all here in this class at this time, right? <laughs> Sorry, it's a hair past the freckle. And what else? There's something else I was going to say. All here in this class at this time, I think that's, that's, anyway, that's playing. So if you wanted to get a representative sample from Grossmont, what would you have to do possibly? Talk to random people. Talk to random, people. random people. Now be more specific about random. How would you get random people? All right, you go to different classes. That would be an immediate improvement. But if I just went around to different classes right now, it's still this time. So you have to go to different classes, different times of the day. That's one way to do it. But what about online students? Would you ever, do they have a chance to get into the sample? So I'm trying to lead you a little bit. Do you have a better feel for what a random sample might be. That's the sample we're always trying to work towards, is a truly random sample. But what does it mean to be a truly random sample? Every person or thing in the population must have a chance to be a part of the sample. right? So if I only pick this, nobody else who's not in this class could be. They'd have to randomly just come in. They, 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 the people that can only be here at 8 in the morning, they can't be in the sample. If I went around to every class at every time of day, went around to every classroom and picked a person at every classroom, that still isn't good enough because there are people online who never come on campus. And they are in the population. You guys kind of with me? So in reality, to be truly random sample is, is almost impossible to achieve. Most things are done over the phone. You know, a lot of people get the little phone. Do you have about five minutes? I'd like to ask you about the upcoming election. Right? And trying to poll people to see how their candidate is going to do. Right? Um, so to be truly random sample. So to be a sample, you just have to be a subgroup of the population. You could have horrible samples. To be random sample, which is what we're always trying for, means that every... Thing. Let, me, let me be a little more mathematically precise. Every element of the population. Are you guys cool if I use that word? Every element of the population. Could be a person, could be a dog, could be a shoelace, light bulb, I don't know. Every element of the population has a chance, actually an equal chance, 
that's even harder to get, has an equal chance to be in the sample. Okay. Now, believe it or not, I think you guys all had some idea of this before I even opened my mouth today. You all kind of knew what a good sample was. You kind of know the bigger it is, the better. You kind of know you have to have a variety of stuff in there, right? This is a very, a much more precise way of looking at it. How are we doing? Okay, so we want to pick 40 students. We, what's, anybody have a good way to do this then for Grossmont? I'll give you, I'll give you a little help. I'll, I'll let you go to the office and have a printout of all the students. Like an email? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you access to all the students in their emails. So how are you going to make random sample of 40 students? To give you that list. Maybe yeah, you could do. You could post. You could paste it on the wall back there and have people come in and throw darts. You could pick every tenth one in the starting point. So, coming back to random sample, if I picked every tenth one, does anybody believe this isn't true anymore? Could that still be a random sample? Totally, because I just make the first person random. I just randomly pick the first person, and then I pick ten, every tenth one after that. Could anybody in the population be in the sample then? Totally. Don't say, you're skipping nine people. I don't care. I could have changed that, and then this guy would have been there. Or I could have changed that first guy, and then this guy would have been in there. Are you with me? Everybody has a chance to be in. So that's, that's what's called systematic sampling. You have a system to how you pick. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. All right, so we'll get more into specific samples types later. All right, there's just one right there. I'm not really going by the book anymore now. Oh, well, too bad. Uh... Where have I gone? Oh, okay. Let's see where I am. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so coming back for a second. Let me, let me pull it back a bit. Let me get back to section one, two. Um, blah, blah, blah. Let me see if I can sneak this in. Good. So we got some good stuff. Population sample, random sample. That's obviously huge. These are going to pop up the whole semester, these terms. right? So let's take a step, step back and let's talk about one, two specifically. If I find my 40 students I have to be careful about how I ask the question then right you could ask a leading question you could say something like uh, do you think Pepsi tastes like crap right <laughs> and somebody say no not really and they go okay they like Pepsi yay Right? So you, can, you can ask a question that would lead somebody away from what their answer might be. Kind of with me? Uh, when you have elections, I don't know if you guys, how many of you guys have ever voted for any public office? Are you guys not old enough for that? How many of you guys just turned 18 recently? <laughs> All right. Okay. How many of you guys just, you know, your vote, your non-vote is a vote for, I don't care about any of you people, just, okay. All right. I never want to hear you guys complaining about everything, anything. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, that's my old man moment of the day. All right. Vote. You can't say damn thing. Um, I'm totally fine. So when you do an election, uh, people fight over where they're listed. There's a huge kind of like, there's rules in place in places, and there's things you have to do to be listed first because it's statistically been proven that the first person listed automatically gets a bump, right? Not like the Colbert bump. <laughs> Who watches Colbert? But it's a, an automatic bump. If you go in, some old person going in there, that'd be old person. I don't know why I'm picking old people, but you go in and you have no idea. I don't know who I'm going to vote for. Uh, you and you. You got to vote for the first one. Right? Not, not always, but enough to give that person a bump. So that's why people automatically, they're like, put me first, put me first. You guys kind of with me? So the order in which you ask things could affect the outcome. Right? Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I don't know how I can pull more of this stuff in there. Let me, see, let me finish this one idea. Oh, yeah, let me do all this and then I'll come back to that. Okay. So we got our 40 students. The, the, the thing we're trying to say, we, we know what we want to say something about is the population. We want to say something about the population. In this case, the case it's Coke versus Pepsi. The percentage you prefer Coke, right? Um, so that thing that we want to say about the population is called the parameter. Do you notice something nice about that word? It starts with a P, right? 
So the, the parameter is the measurement of the population, normally numerical measurements, but it's kind of measurement of the population. It could possibly be something non-numerical. But normally this would be one of two things. It would be a, a mean, which is what we call an average, or a percentage. It doesn't have to be one of those two things, but that's what it is normally. You guys still kind of with me? Let me make sure that people at home can see. I've moved to the other board. There you go. Okay. Now here's the really nice thing. Can, are we going to get the parameter in our study, the way we've got things set up? Are we going to get this? Because they're so optimistic. So we're going to talk to all 20,000 students, so we'll know exactly this. All right, so try again. Are we going to get the parameter? But we're going to try to get a feel for it by using the sample that we picked. Hopefully the random sample we picked, right? So normally you're not going to get the parameter because normally in statistics we use a sample. So the most we can do is we can kind of say, well, it looks like this. And actually when we get to chapter 7, we're going to learn something uh, I get the feeling, a lot, not a lot of you guys are into politics, but normally when you see on the news or uh, online, you see uh, uh, they talk about, looks like 44% want to vote for, for candidate A and 40% want to vote for candidate B. What's always at the bottom of the screen? The libertarians. Aw, <laughs> I didn't mean that. For the libertarians. Well, it's only the very, very bottom. They list all the candidates. At the very, very bottom... Margin of error, they say plus or minus 4%, right? And they don't just do that like, well, are we sure about it? No, well, let's cover our ass, plus or minus 4 No, we're in Chapter 7, we're going to learn the math formula that leads to that plus or minus. You guys kind of with me? Um, so we want to say something about the parameter. We don't have time or resources to look at the whole population. So we take a sample... And when we take a sample, what we calculate is called the statistic. Notice that letter. Parameter deals with the population. They start with the letter P. Statistic is what a parameter is, just about the sample. You with me? Same definition, just sample. Numerical measurement of the sample. So if we talk to our 40 Grossmont people, and we find that uh, 19 prefer Coke. Actually, well, screw it. Well, let's see. Let me try you guys. How many people are in here? Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 46, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, 57. All right, I make it. Let's make this 57. So I'm, I'm purposely, I'm taking a bad sample, but that's okay. We'll just deal with it. Let's pretend like we're a good sample, right? You're all randomly chosen by computer, and that's why you're here. Um, how many of you guys prefer Coke to Pepsi? Anybody? Let's see. Oh, crap. A lot of you guys. How many? All right, shit. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. 6, 28, 30, 32, 33. Okay. No, Jeff, you just said 33. Somebody help me out. What percentage is that? It's 33 divided by 57. You don't have to do it in your head. It's like 50, 50 something, 60 something. Somewhere in there. Good. It's more than, it's uh, more than half. Good. So about 57%. That's neat. All right. All right, good. So what would that be? Statistically, what would that what word would I use to describe the number I just found? That is a statistic. statistic. I like it. That is the statistic that we calculated because it came from our sample. S statistics sample. Right? So then we'd say, so we think that you know, somewhere between 52% and 62% maybe, whatever the plus or minus is going to be, and we're going to learn how to calculate 
this it's normally like four or three. We're going to learn how to calculate this in chapter seven. And you probably should realize, how would I make that number get smaller? Like, how could I be more and more certain? What do I have to do? The big, the quickest way is to make my sample bigger. Right? The bigger your sample, the more certain you are about what you get. So that's one way to cut that margin of error down, which only makes sense. Okay. Maybe. Okay, okay. Good. So that 57% would be our statistic. And then we could say something like we think the parameter, we think the real percentage of all Grossman students who prefer Coke is somewhere between 53 and 61 percent, something like that. You with me if it was plus or minus 4 percent? That would be our estimate for the parameter. Oh crap, there's so much happening. This is the first day, Jeff. <laughs> the hell? All right, anybody feel like that? That's too bad. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Let me see how much more I want to run through here. I can run through a little bit more. Um, Coming back real quick to one, two. I don't want to get too, too out of order here. Um, here's some of the stuff they talk about in section one, two. They talk about statistical significance, for one thing. Let me put this up here. I should maybe just log on to. Take too long, man. Let's just do this. Okay. All right, so, be careful with the answers. Oh, okay. Right there. All right, so let's look at a couple of these. Uh, oh. Uh, I probably should have left the question in there. The question says, uh, determine whether the sampling method appears to be sound or is flawed. So like number 10, is this a good sampling method? In a survey of 109 subjects, each was asked to indicate how many text messages they send and receive each day. The sample consisted of those who choose to respond to the requested post on the StatCrunch website. Is that a good sample? Yeah. Why? Uh, people who choose to instead of you choosing people. Exactly. So this is what's called a voluntary response sample. So anytime I talk slow like that, it's a note. Right? But it's in the book too, so you can get you. So a voluntary response sample is when, when you send out questionnaires and you say, send this back. So you send out 10,000 questionnaires and 4,000 come back and you might say, well, that's pretty good. But those people that sent them back, is there possibly anything that might bias your findings? Why did they send them back? Because they felt strongly about something. And very often that strong feeling is in one direction or the other. Very often nowadays it's in the negative direction, right? You're not going to say something if you had a nice flight, but you're, gonna never, you're not going to stop talking <laughs> if you had a bad flight. You with me? So it's always kind of naturally skewed in that direction. You've got to kind of keep that in mind when we look at stuff like Yelp. Right? Also, Yelp has a lot of other things to keep in mind, but we won't go there. Um, uh, evolution. In a survey of beliefs about evolution, Gallup pollsters randomly selected and telephoned 1,018 adults in the U.S. Wait a minute. Now, the hidden thing about this, this is probably the best you could do, but there is something hidden here that I would accept either answer, really. What's sort of bad? Does everybody in the population have a chance to be in the sample? No. People the people don't that don't, have, people don't have, phones. have phones. There are people in this country, there are people in this state, there are people in this county that do not have telephones at all. They have a landline or a cell phone, right? They've taken themselves off the grid. <laughs> or they just don't, don't, care. don't want to go on the grid or whatever. You, you kind of with me? But there are certain parts where you just have to accept this is the best we get. This is the closest we can get to a truly random sample. Kind of with me? So I would accept either answer on that, really. Um, okay. The thing about significance... Whoa. 
see how they do there. Significance, statistical significance versus practical significance. So let me, let me give you a, a silly example, just to give you an idea. If I told you that if you slept an additional six hours a day, some of you guys are like, I already sleep 20 hours. <laughs> if you slept an additional six hours a day, you could live, you could add uh, five months onto the length of your life. And it's statistically significant, which means it, I, the study I conducted, uh, the chances that it could have happened randomly with the people I chose. So I chose people and I had these people sleep more and I had these people sleep normal. The chances that these people's lives would be longer based on something besides them sleeping more is really small, like 1%. So that means it's statistically significant findings. It was probably the sleep that caused them to live longer than they would have. You, you kind of with me? It's a really complicated study, actually. We'll get into all, but just accept it as it is for the moment, right? Um, so it is statistically significant. There's no, no question. Is it practically significant? Would you change your life based on it? Would you do it? Hell no. What the hell, man? Six hours a day, how much life are you losing right there? Right? You're not going to dream that whole time. It's basically lost time. kind of sucks. So it's, that's the difference between statistically significant and practically significant. Practical significance means would it actually be something I would do? Would it, would it have a practical uh, uh, impact on my life? You kind of with me? So the math, the statistics just cares that you've shown evidence that this does something. Is it something I personally would want to have done? Uh, that's the practical significance, right? That's the human, like, well, that's an interesting study, but I don't want to do that. It's not worth it. You with me? Now, if it added 40 years on my life and I would be healthy through that whole time, I might consider it. You with me? You see, I mean, at some point it becomes worth it. That's the practical significance. Okay, maybe, maybe. So, see, what's well, their questions here? Number 14, in a study of the gender aid method of gender selection, a thousand users of the method gave birth to 540 boys and 460 girls. There's about a 1% chance that such extreme results would occur if the method had no effect. <clears throat> so, is it statistically significant? Does the math say, oh, yeah, there appears to be. Uh, relationship between the, you doing this and the outcome. Yes, there's only a 1% chance it would happen by itself. So it did happen. So we're like, what's more likely is what we, this, this method actually caused more boys and girls. Right? If you had a thousand kids born somewhere, how many boys would you expect? 500. 500. Right? It's actually a little bit more geared towards boys because nature realizes boys, we die earlier. It's just the fact. So nature's interesting. It actually has a higher percentage of boys born to account for the fact that we die quicker. It's really, but for the purpose of this class, we're going to assume it's 50-50, all right? We're not going to worry about it. It's actually 50 points something. Um, is it practically significant? That's a harder question here. Is it practically significant? If somebody wanted a boy, they didn't want a girl, would they do this? This is kind of hard to answer, really. Why not? Does it make it certain enough? If it was 700 boys and 300 girls, maybe. Right? If I want a boy, I want it to be a, a really good chance I'm going to get a boy. I don't want to, you know, the, I could really just conversation get very uncomfortable very quickly, but <laughs> <laughs> I got to be careful. So, but you understand, if somebody really wanted a boy, they didn't want another girl. They've already got seven girls, and they're going to make a little, little league thing out of it. Casey at the bat, and all kind of stuff. Uh, and they want a boy. They want a method that's going to guarantee, almost guarantee them a boy. So this might not be good enough odds, right? From 50%, I went to 54%. Is that a good enough, do you see where I got that number? 540 out of 1,000? That's not a good enough, it's not practically significant. It's statistically significant. This would not happen, so this kind of thing would only happen 1% of the time, normally. So because it did happen... Why did it happen? Probably because of this method they used. Because that's the only new thing they did. You kind of with me? I don't know if you guys are really with me. This is really important. If I just had a thousand kids born, only one percent of the time would I see numbers like this. A breakdown like this. You with me? One percent of the time. 
So if that happens somewhere, what's more likely? It just randomly happened? Or the thing I did made it happen? The thing I did made it happen. That's what's more likely. There's a 1% chance I'm wrong. But that's what I love about statistics. Statistics says you can't be 100% certain about any damn thing. It's always built. Every problem you do is going to have a, ooh, you could be wrong. And that's life. right? If you're hoping at the end of this class, I can tell you how to win every poker game. I can't because otherwise I'd be playing the poker games. I'd be winning a lot of money. I'm not, am I? So I can't do that for you. Sorry. Okay. Um, all right. So let's have that. Let me, let me. Oh, I kind of wanted to get a little bit further. Shoot. Uh, so I'll tell you what. Let me see. Section 1 2 is, is, is a lot of kind of common sense stuff, but you also have this practical significance versus statistical significance, which is not common sense. We're not used to it. So you've got to be a little careful when you get to that point. But once you see what it means, it makes a lot more sense, as I'm hoping. Uh, section 1 3 gets back into pure definitions of stuff. So it's got parameter, it's got statistic. Then it kind of breaks down the kind of variables you could look at. Right? So, for example, if I asked, your age. I could calculate the average age, right? Because it's a certain kind of variable. If I ask your hair color, your real hair color, <laughs> could I calculate an average hair color? Could I? What's blonde plus purple? <laughs> Avocado. I don't know what the hell it is, right? So I could not calculate an average hair color because hair color is just the name of something. It's an attribute. It's a characteristic. So the type of variable we're working with tells me what I can do with it. That kind of makes sense, right? I can't say uh, everybody's jersey number. Let me average everybody's jersey number, and that's going to mean something, right? Now, one time I had members of the women's basketball team, and I, asked, I said, if I take your number, what's your number? What's your number? And I averaged them together. They said, oh, that would be Michelle. <laughs> it turned out to be her number. I was like, no, shit. That's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> but if you average jersey numbers, is, the number gonna, is that going to mean anything? It doesn't mean a damn thing, right? I'm above average. Uh, no. <laughs> now, is it, ten, is, it, is it golf rules? Lower number better? I don't know. No. That doesn't make any sense. Um, let's see. Okay. So what we're going to do is I want to go, which is good for you. Um, I want you guys, if you haven't gotten the book yet, um, I forgot to do this before. There is, uh, I'm going to try to remember to do this. Oh, let me think. They have chapter one up on the web. Oh, crap. They have chapter one up on the web before the old edition of the book. But it has all the same terminology and, and, and uh, definitions and stuff in there. You with me? So if I remember, I'm going to put that hyperlink on, the, uh, on my website. So if you don't have, how many guys do not have a book yet and do not foresee getting one by Wednesday? Okay, just a few of you guys. Most, so most everybody should have a book by Wednesday? It's a good thing to at least tell me. All right. Have a book very soon. Email me if you want the link to this online so you can at least start looking through the, the book and getting used to some of the terminology. I want you to read four and the one four. That's kind of like your homework tonight. Yeah, today we got barely into one three. Yeah. Okay. That's funny. Uh, if you need an ad code, I'll bring those with me on Wednesday. Uh,